The project cost data for the projects that are stored in the Model Logics database can come from a number of sources. Certainly, Model Logics is tightly integrated to the detailed estimating software from WinEst. I can click on the WinEst option, browse to a WinEst estimate on the network, and import that estimate into the back end Model Logics database. However, Model Logics is a unique application in that it runs independent of the estimating software. In fact, probably half of the customers that use Model Logics today are importing costs from other third party software, either other competitive estimating systems, project management systems, or even Trimble's own project management systems like Prolog and ProLiance. I can do that by browsing out to an Excel file anywhere on the network and importing that file into the backend database. That gives me full flexibility to bring cost into that database from any number of authoring tools. Can you imagine trying to reach into a wall of three-door filing cabinets to put your hands on a handful of projects that are similar to the opportunity currently in front of you? With the powerful search engine in Model Logics, combined with the project attributes, I can put my hands on at least one project similar to the project in front of me, or ideally a handful of projects. I simply click on the search estimate option. I'm immediately presented with a map with the location of all the projects that are currently stored in the Model Logics database. Now this map and the list of projects below is the unfiltered list of projects. But remember, I'm trying to eliminate those projects that are not like the project that I currently need to create a budget for. If I needed to look for just healthcare projects of a certain type, I can put those project attributes to use by clicking over here on the right hand side Maybe tell the system I'm only looking for healthcare projects. I'm only looking for healthcare projects that are greater than 130,000 square feet. I'm only looking for healthcare projects that have more than two floors, so on and so forth. You see additional project attributes here. These are all customizable by the user. Each individual customer of Model Logics creates their own project attributes that allows them to quickly search the entire database and look for just the projects they're interested in. After selecting the three projects, you can now enter some minimum scope for the conceptual budget that you're creating a cost model for. For example, I will create a cost model for a proposed hospital in Orlando, Florida. I'll enter 120,000 square feet for the project, potentially a start date or a midway point in the project, and then I will let Model Logics take care of all the math for me. Here you can see how quickly Model Logics assembled the model and has done it in a matter of seconds, something that would take me hours, if not days, if I had to perform this task manually. In the first set of columns, I see the model itself for the conceptual budget for the Orlando General Hospital. To the right, I see the three projects that I selected to become the basis for that model. Now that I'm in the model, I can instantly see the average cost per unit across those three projects. I can analyze that cost by any work breakdown structure that a company deploys. For example, right now I'm looking at a very summarized system level view, uniform at level one. I can drill into increasing levels of detail simply by dragging the additional levels over to the row fields in the model itself. Now you'll notice I've gone from seven or eight lines of detail into a full-blown cost model for all systems of Uniformat. Just as quickly, I could change my mind and determine that I want to create a cost model based on CSI. I drag the CSI division code, the CSI major code, the CSI minor code, and just that quickly, I'm analyzing this model, but I'm doing it using a completely different work breakdown structure. WinEst Model Logics makes it very easy to analyze the projects and look for outliers or costs within a given project that might be skewing the model. I can do that a number of ways. First, I can click on the Statistics tab, and I can see across my projects 
the mean unit price, the median, minimum, maximum range, variance, and I can even see standard deviation. And I can notice that some of these projects, the, the price difference is quite different than what is in the overall model. I can also graphically represent those differences in unit price. I can also look at a range graph which shows me over here on the right each of the individual projects included in my model as well as the average unit price that is calculated off of each one of those projects. Modelogix recognize that it's not just enough to have a list of projects stored in the Modelogix database with the costs broken down by your customized work breakdown structures that you may also want to reference critical documents for those same projects that have been stored in the Modelogix database. And of course that's possible by opening up a project, clicking on the Attachments tab, and being able to see any and all related documents that were saved with this Modelogix database. So you can imagine having these documents at your fingertips for a project that could be five or ten years old, a project where the lead estimator may not be available for your questions. The answers to your questions most likely would fall within these save documents, again, that are attached to each project in the Modelogix database. Modelogix can not only be used to create the initial feasibility budget, but if you look down the road, Modelogix can also be used to benchmark what's believed to be the final estimate, allowing you to spot variances that are beyond an acceptable range. For example, if I click on the benchmark tab at the top of the screen, I'm asked to select an estimate from the navigation pane to drop into the empty box. My final estimate is for the Orlando General Hospital. I'm going to benchmark that against my cost model of projects of similar scope. Once I do that, I can then move over to the benchmark columns and walk down the percentage differences between my final estimate and a cost model of projects of similar scope, looking for variances that are beyond an acceptable range. If this was not enough, I can also graphically see a representation of this benchmarking data. I can come up to the top, click on range, I can see the cost model itself and down below I can see where the final estimate for Orlando General Hospital falls on the overall range graph. In Modelogix we recognize that the feasibility budget, the cost model itself, is also a marketing tool. You want your proposal that communicates this initial feasibility budget to look professional, complete, and provide the owner with the information they're looking for. Modelogix includes a very flexible report designer and to give you an example of what that looks like I've saved one of the report designs over in the navigation pane. I can go back to my conceptual model for the Orlando General Hospital. I can select the report design, drag it on top of the model, and get a print preview for what that proposal would look like if I had actually sent that proposal to the printer. I can have a cover page, I can include a table of contents giving the location of important information. I can include information about the model itself as well as information about the projects or comparable projects that were used as the basis for the model itself. I can also include a side-by-side -side view of the spreadsheet that shows information about the model as well as the supporting projects that provided the basis for that model. In addition, I may want to include the same graphical information that we looked at earlier. All of this making this report output look professional and again hopefully separating our organization from any organization that this owner might also be in discussion with. 